Okay, so in this video, the main tool that we're going to be using is the post effect called Analog TV. And within the Analog TV material, if we just click here, we're not really going to be using the noise and we're not really going to be using the chromatic aberration, although obviously if you want to use that, you can add it later. But we're just going to be focusing on this distortion texture and this distortion section and you could also do a lot of this stuff in the post effect called distortion but I prefer using the analog TV so if you look in the textures when you create the analog TV it gives you this vector image and when I first saw this I thought that they had to kind of match these colors so I made a lens recently where I exported the vector image opened it up in GIMP and I started kind of just playing around and I just wanted to kind of test just to see how it would look so I just kind of like used the color picker to select some of the colors and then I just kind of did these big circles and then when I exported it I just wanted to kind of see how that would affect the final image so it ended up looking like this kind of like cracked screen, which I thought looked quite cool. And I used it in one of my lenses, which you can get here. But I found out that it really doesn't need to use these colors. You can just use um, a black and white image or a color image. It really doesn't matter. You can use like a gradient if you want to test it and kind of like, yeah, I would just say, I would just recommend playing around with it. But if you want to make a glitch effect, an easy thing that you can do is just go to Google and search for like black and white glitch image and then just download. I downloaded this one and you can also put GIF at the end and just sort of like download some as GIFs and just see how they work. Or if you want to make your own GIF, you can just like get a image, put it into a photo editing software and just kind of like drag it around, resize it and export it at different um, sizes and different sections of the image so you can sort of get a big section here move it export move it again export rotate export resize export etc as an example so then make a folder put those all in it and you'll be left with sort of this kind of thing where you've got a couple of different pictures all with kind of the similar style glitch add re in the resources just do add 2d animation from files and then navigate to the folder that you want to that you saved all your images in and then just um, size it correctly and also yeah when you're making those glitch images make sure that you've um, sized them roughly the same size as like a phone screen so then once you've created that animation sequence you can just drag that into your distortion texture of the analog TV and you'll be given this kind of glitch texture and then you can just kind of like control the strength of it and get it looking how you want it to look also you could add like when you're in the before like when you're exporting if you wanted to have like some frames where it's glitchy and then some frames where it's not glitchy you could just do like a gray a fully gray image so you could do like glitchy image, glitchy image, gray, 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 glitchy, gray, glitchy, gray kind of thing. So that it's like maybe not constantly glitching, but it has these little breaks of where it's kind of normal looking and then glitching and then normal looking and then glitching. And you can also add that same because it's a black and white texture. You could also use it as like a mask on your camera. So then it will only be affecting um, it will only be sort of like affecting certain areas of it. And then if you do put a mask on it, you can put other effects and it will only affect certain parts. And then you can also duplicate that animation and like do a different speed. Um, so you could, you know, you can get quite a lot out of the set out of one animation sequence. You can, you know, change the speed a couple times and use it for a couple different things. So using this technique, I made a GIF of these kind of like VHS distortion scratch lines. And you can see here it gives it a lot more of an authentic kind of old school camcorder VHS look. 
And if you want to learn more about making a VHS style lens for Snapchat, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned because I'll be uploading that tutorial next.